what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Poco A5 5G and during this video I'm gonna be talking about the latest evolution it's ROM and yes in the past build actually had a bug with Bluetooth devices and that has been completely fixed with this latest 29 December 2023 build. I have been using this ROM as my daily driver and I can again say that this is one of the most perfect Android 14 ROMs that I have seen for the Poco A5 and you will see why I say that. And here is how the about section actually looks like. By the way, if you want to flash this from on your Poco A5, you can check out the flashing guide from the description box below. And here we have the Evolution X logo up top and in terms of Android version, of course it is Android 14. Let me go back. We have the Evolution X version as 8.1 Yema is the code name. And this is for Marvel or Poco A5's code name that is. And this is the official build again. The security patch that you are getting is latest of December 5th, 2023. The stock kernel here is the 5.10 silver core kernel. The build maintainer is of course still Joe Wap. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. And we have the build date as 29 December 2023. And one of my most favorite part about this Evolution X ROM is the updates. Well, the updates are really, really consistent. Whenever there is a slight bit of bug, a new update will come. Do not worry. It can get fixed within a few hours or a few days. So that's just really awesome for this particular ROM is that the most consistent and the most reliable updates that you can get and of course there is a system updater in the system settings and you can check for updates from right here now in the system settings in terms of gestures we do have the quick tap actions and these are the options for that and if i do back tap as you can see quick tap detected so it is working and we have the quickly open camera and stuff the one-handed mode also should be working fine and yes it is working we have the lift to check phone as well you can enable it if you want to and we have the press and hold power button action then we also have the double tap to sleep and the swipe to screenshot is also there and that is actually working we get the share edit delete and the google lens and the capture mode feature as well so all of the options are there we have the quick torch as well in case you need that and there is automatically turn off torch as well then we have the playback control and the prevent ringing and in terms of navigation mode we have this gesture settings if you go into the settings of it we have this edge long swipe actions you can customize that and we have the navigation hint then we have the pill length and radius customization with the fullest length and radius this is how big and thick it looks and we have the back gesture height then the back gesture animation and the haptic and stuff then the IME button space all these things swipe to invoke assistant is also working perfectly fine no need to worry we have the left edge right edge customization then we also get the two and three button navigation talking about the stock launcher well it has been changed and yes you do not get the evolution x launcher anymore and in case you are wondering which launcher is this well let me actually show you from the home screen settings this is the pixel launcher but it is a really really stable experience with this pixel launcher that i have to say the animations the features and stuff everything just looks perfect with this pixel launcher and by the way you can go into the split screen and the freeform mode as well from here and in the freeform mode yes the rounded corners are not there but yeah they might be added in the future updates but this is how the freeform window actually looks like and in the stock launcher settings there is the suggestion disabling option and stuff but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen do not expect those because this is a pixel launcher but double tap to sleep is there on the status bar and that is actually working fine no need to worry i'll show you the locking and unlocking stuff later on in detail but to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page and it is very fast and smooth no problem swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel this is how it looks like and opening and closing an app it's just a buttery smooth experience just notice how smooth it is with this launcher and the battery widget and stuff everything is working fine the phone's battery and bluetooth battery both are showing up perfectly fine and i have also added the subscriber account widget and the clock widget animation and stuff opening and closing just notice how smooth it is so every widget that you are gonna add is gonna be working perfectly fine here no need to worry in terms of quick setting panel yes you can edit and add a plethora of toggles over here but in terms of the toggles that i have added are the wi-fi toggle the mobile data toggle then the bluetooth toggle as well the flashlight and stuff we have the google home controls the auto rotate the battery saver the screen recorder and we have this HEVC option right there and you can record the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time and the other features are there but the quick setting panel still stays dark even in the light theme and in the next page we have the nearby shared the hotspot dark theme the disabler night light always on display you can toggle it for charging as well and there is the FPS info the heads up everything is present then we have the sound toggle the refresh rate you can change from here we have the extra dim the alarm and we have the do not disturb QR code scanner airplane mode screencast also we get the security kind of stuff mic and camera privacy toggles are there so you can disable them if you want to and the brightness slider in case you are wondering you know why it looks like this 
because I have actually customized it this way and you can actually change the position of this if you want to and the power menu will appear like this if you tap on advanced you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot talking about vaulty e calling and stuff yes they are working perfectly fine no need to worry and there is the call recording option with this google dialer and there is also that beep option and with that it won't actually announce that you are recording the call so that's nice it just will give you a beep and bluetooth device switching and stuff everything is working fine with the calling ui and in case you are wondering about the 5g speeds yes the 5g speeds are working perfectly fine now let's talk about the stock wallpaper well if you just tap and hold on the blank area of the home screen you can actually get a glance of the other wallpapers that you can switch from right here but if you go into the wallpapers and styles and from here if you go into the more settings you will get the minerals and stuff there is the come alive section so you can use these live wallpapers also the living universe options are there then we have this community lens kind of wallpapers looks really really nice and the other options just like a pixel device you will get amazing amount of wallpapers including with the ai wallpaper and stuff you can create a wallpaper with this ai and while i'm onto this let me actually show you there is a themed icon options and we have the app grid you can select it up to five by five that's what i have been using and there is the lock screen clock style customization of android 14 this is the one i have been using but you can change it between these many options just notice how many options are there for the android 14 clocks plethora of options are here and they just look perfectly beautiful we have the shortcut changing option you can have the left and right shortcut on the lock screen then we have the show notification on the lock screen and the more privacy kind of things are there this is the lock screen kind of settings which is present in the display settings now let's talk about the stock camera of this rom well you are getting the leica camera version 5 over here and with this all the lenses everything is working and the front camera is also working perfectly fine as you can see and here there is the portrait mode the night mode the 64 megapixel mode everything should be working perfectly fine and even in the video settings you can shoot up to 4k and 60 fps videos and just notice how fast it switches with the rear camera at least and with the front camera you can shoot up to 1080p and 60 fps videos they should be working perfectly fine as you can notice from here so yeah pretty much 1080p 60 fps front camera video and rear 4k 60 fps videos will be working perfectly fine here that's really nice and in the documents mode you can shoot enhanced mode documents and there's a pro mode you can shoot pro mode videos if you want to and that too up to 4k and 60 fps and you can see some of the samples that i have shot with this particular camera and swiping up will also get you to these particular options that you can notice from here so pretty much having the leica camera version 5 right out of the box it's just an awesome experience and i have to say the pictures coming out of this camera are really really optimized now let's talk about the basic things the drmm certification actually shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p and in terms of the play integrity checker it actually shows meets device integrity and the basic integrity so the banking apps that i have tried are actually working fine and trust me guys i use a lot of banking apps they are perfectly working by the way in play store it actually shows device is certified so that's really nice to see even in terms of the IR Blaster, yes, the IR Blaster is also working. And the Google Photos app does have the unlimited pixel like backup over here. So no need to worry about it. I'll show you the customizations present inside the Evolver later on. First, let me talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like. And this is one of my favorite part because in this battery settings, if you just scroll down, you will get to see the battery health, the battery temperature, the cycle count, and even the battery diagnostic option is there. For me, my battery health shows as 87%. And this battery health may not be accurate, guys. So it changes, I have seen it changing from time to time, depending on your charging kind of habit. We have the battery temperature and the charging cycle right here. And here we will get the battery optimization per app you can actually do. Then we have the sleep mode as well. Then we also have the battery charge warning and the charging control. If you enable it, your fast charging will not work properly, but it is actually good for your battery's health. And we have the thermal profiles right here. And you can set per app's thermal profiles to this benchmark browser, camera, dialer, gaming, streaming, etc. options. Let me go back we also have the normal battery saver and the extreme battery saver is there as well and in the aqua battery app i have actually tested the battery life with this particular app and here you will see the estimated numbers the screen on time that i have been getting overall is about nine plus hours so that's i would say a decent amount of number for this particular device because it has a really really powerful cpu guys we have the screen off or the standby time as about 61 hours so that's really a huge amount of number again and we have the combine use as 14 or 15 hours you can say but at least if you charge up to 100 percent in a day it will definitely last you a whole long day without any issues that i can say and in the battery health section for me depending on my charging habit it actually shows as 90% over here so that's nice even though in the settings it was showing 87% 
and the fast charging and all everything is working fine here no need to worry about it by the way i'm not going to show you every detail of the settings but let me just go into one by one we have the media call ring etc volume controls in the volume settings we have the brightness slider haptic the quick setting vibrate on toggle touch the volume haptic feedback and all in the sound vibration settings then we also have the power app volume control this clear calling may not work because once i enable it and go back as you can see it just disable itself so that's how it is but we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound etc but there is the Mi Audio Direct right now instead of Dolby Atmos which was causing issues earlier. So with this Mi Audio Direct sound quality via the headphone jack and the Bluetooth devices and stuff, everything is working fine. You have the choose scene option, then the choose headphone preset options. These are the options for the headphones and I have been using with the youth edition and there is the enable hi-fi option as well. So you can use it. The Mi Audio Direct is present and that's really nice. We have the clear speaker option as well. By the way, the volume panel looks like this and it is really nice to see this device switching option back right here. And if you just tap here, you can directly switch the output devices and there is the Bluetooth device and you can just switch to your phone speaker or your Bluetooth device from right here. So this is really, really nice. I have to say in the display setting stuff, we have this adaptive brightness and all. Then we have the dark thing. Yes, there is the pitch black option. We have the display size and text, the night light, the live display options and the color calibrations are there. Then we also have the auto rotate kind of stuff. Then the background blur and the smart pixels are also there in case you want to enable those. You have the smooth display and the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can switch up to 60 or 120 hertz then we have the low power refresh rate then we have the double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up pocket direction and the power app refresh rate is there you can switch between 60 and 120 hertz there is no 90 hertz option here and in the lock screen settings this is how it looks like we also have the advanced settings from here and of course the lift to check phone is there and i have enabled that i'll show you if it's working in the security settings this is how it looks like but in the device unlock if you go into the settings of it we do have the quick unlock and all and we have this auto confirm unlock i'll just set up the face unlock for now but i may need to reboot because i'm setting it up for the first time and there is the always require confirmation and skip lock screen option for the face unlock and for the fingerprint there is the touch to unlock but if you want to press on this particular side mounted fingerprint scanner button then only it will detect your fingerprint just disable this option but sadly in the more settings there is no app lock as of right now so that is how it is but you can actually hide the developer status of apps if you want to like i have hidden for this geopost light app it is actually working fine i have tested it in terms of notifications we have the notification flash option and here this is how it will work looks really nice and in the app settings, there is the clone app option. So you can use dual apps feature with this particular option. And you can have two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook, whichever app you like. There is a game space so you can add any game and you can have the gaming overlay and all. And the gaming performance will be fine. No need to worry about it. Now, let me show you the locking and unlocking stuff. I'll just double tap to sleep on the status bar. And if I just put the device on the desk like this and pick it up on my hand, as you can see, the pickup gesture is actually working perfectly fine and double tap to wake is also working perfectly fine here. Now, let me show you with the always on display and the fingerprint scanner as you just saw is working fine. Double tapping to sleep again and it is working in the always on display right now. And I'm just tapping the fingerprint scanner and as you can see, just unlocked. Just look at this, how fast and snappy it unlocks and it has the ripple kind of effect. Looks beautiful, I would say once it's unlocking. So the fingerprint scanner is definitely one of the fastest here. No need to worry about it. And it's just a buttery smooth experience of unlocking. There is no flickering or any jitters while unlocking your device. And even on the lock screen, this is how the animation looks like of the clock with this particular Android 14 clock. Now talking about the face unlock, yes, as you can see, I just set up the face unlock, but even without rebooting the device, it is actually working right now. So that's really nice. Once I double tap, let me just point the device towards my face. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try one more time. So yes, the face unlock is working perfectly fine. No need to worry. But again, there is no app lock here, at least right out of the box. So it might be added in the future updates, but not present as of now. Talking about performance, let's open this test to FO website. And with that, if you're noticing this Chrome actually shows 120 FPS right here. So no need to worry about 120 Hertz in this particular ROM. It is working all of the time, 120 Hertz, no issues so far. The performance with this Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 is huge and the Evolution X ROM is handling it properly well, that I have to say. And if I open multiple different apps, let me actually show you here. If I open YouTube also, and then if I open Play Store and all, and just switching between apps, it's not a problem at all. And it's a blazing fast experience of switching between apps, no issues so far, as you can see. So everywhere, it's a very, very smooth experience and scrolling is working perfectly fine. It's a very fast experience. 
no issues so far. So daily driving performance definitely is one of the best in this ROM and even the RAM management and stuff, everything is working fine. And in the recents, as you can see, it's pretty smooth experience right here. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps. There's a screenshot and select option. By the way, here are the current Geekbuild score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance. Now it's time that I show you the customizations. Well, you will get those in the Evolver settings. In here, we have the themes and in the theme settings, there is the theme style and all. Then we have the color source as well. If you just scroll down, we have the luminance, chroma factor, tint, background, etc. options. And the dark themes are there and you can use the black theme or the pitch black option. And we have the headline and body fonts and just notice plethora of fonts are here that you can choose from. Let me go back. We have the icon packs as well. These are the options. Then we have the Wi-Fi icon styles and this is how they look. And we have the icon shapes as well. Then the brightness slider style. You can use this with different options. I have been using it with Bang. And this is how it looks like with that. Then we have the navbar styles as well. And the signal icon styles. And there is the data icon styles. In the status bar, we have the status bar lyric, the clock and date kind of customization. Then the status bar logo, network traffic monitor and the battery style, you can actually change it between these many options. I have been using with the iOS 16. Then the battery bar, status bar icons, and the headset Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons are there. Let me go back, we have the colored icons, the notification icons, the Bluetooth battery stats. And if you scroll down more, we have the show data disabled icon. Then in the notifications, we have this clipboard overlay. Island notification is also there. We have the heads up right here, and you can customize it to less boring heads up. And we have the notification sound if active. Then the in-call vibration options, like the vibrate on connect, call waiting, and disconnect. And we also have the quick settings customization. We have this label takes the vertical layout and all. You can enable them. And this is how they will look if you enable those. You have the columns customization. And the quick setting header image is there. And once you enable that, we'll get these options. And if I just click on one, yes, as you can see, the quick setting header images are actually working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. So this is really nice to see that we are getting all these quick setting header images right here. Yes, it gets a little bit choppy while scrolling over here. I don't know why. You can also select a local image if you want to for the quick setting header image and there is a customization for it. And we also have the battery style for the quick setting panel itself and the percentage. Then we have the quick pull down and all. And there is a brightness slider customization. And here you can have it on show always and the position change it to bottom. We have the auto brightness icon. Yes, auto brightness is also working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. We have the show data usage option and the clear all notification button. Then we have power menu customization, advanced reboot you can enable and you can enable multiple different options. And in the gestures, this is how it looks like. We also have the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar, you can adjust the brightness. We have the double tap to sleep and the click click partial screenshot. Then in the lock screen settings, we have the ambient music ticker, the edge lighting and the lock screen clock fonts. Well, these are the fonts that are present from Android 13 and it can actually work if you use the Android 14's default clock from the world version styles. And we have the lock screen charging info, always on display scheduling option, hide status bar, then the ripple effect and the fingerprint authentication and error vibration. In the buttons, we have the navigation mode, the edge long swipe action, and we have the system settings right here. Then we have the end call and the show volume panel on the left side, actually change the timeout for the volume panel. But our volume control is there again, and we have the volume steps as well. Then we have the swap capacity buttons in case you are using two or three button navigation. In the animations, we have the CRT scale, etc. animation, and we actually have the miscellaneous settings right here. We have this enable ROM side play integrity fix, and you can actually check which device is actually spoofing. And here we have this new enable pixel props option, and there is the spoof as Pixel 8 Pro. So you can get some of the Pixel 8 kind of features, I would say. Let me actually show you this, and here we have this portrait mode and all, and there is this portrait editing option and you can actually check this was the original picture and also we have this enhanced option and in the tools there is the color focus portrait light etc so all these things are actually there and there is a normal blur option and the depth effect you can actually change so these features are really really nice to see in google photos there is also of course the magic eraser so you get the idea the google photos right now has really really amazing features and we have the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher pc in games and the netflix spoof and there is the ignore window secure flags allow application downgrade show cpu info sensor block per package and there is the usb configuration option for convenience so these are all the customizations which are present in this rom so in my opinion this evolution x rom i am not finding any other bugs as of today and i have to say this 29 december 2023 build is one of the best that i have tried and everywhere it's just a buttery smooth experience while opening apps, switching apps, etc. Even though I have the 8GB RAM unit, it's just handling it properly well, just a knife on butter experience. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this ROM. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like this is Tito from KD Index signing off for today. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.